welcome yeah so um as always thank you lord jesus christ uh for all the blessings for the guidance and protection and um second is i have a super interesting uh question that we're going to answer in this video but before that um recently on the train in new york city like some lady like who's sitting relatively near me like walks closer and engages me in a conversation and like you know at some point she's like touching my arm and stuff which is kind of like okay lady we just met but like what is it so we have conversations and it's a great conversation well it's an educational conversation because uh, we talked about like i don't know three or four topics in five minutes so one of them invariably is jesus and she like ends up telling me that like well she was a christian but that like somewhere down the road she realized that uh, the white jesus has been used to enslave people and it's sort of a way to keep people subservient well i'm a slave to jesus christ i'm a slave to no one else um so a uh, lady you're wrong and also it doesn't matter if jesus is white or black it's what he represents right like so i doubt just like that lady doubts that Jesus looks like the typical image um, that portrays him. I've never seen him. We've never met face to face, but man, I'm dying to meet him. <laughs> and what is it? But yeah, the point is that like no one has seen him and it doesn't matter how people depict him. It's what he represents. That's what we all worship is um, not like the face of Jesus, but who he is and what he stands for, right? Okay, so I thought, you know, you know, I should, like, uh, educate you on that because, like, basically I was watching a YouTube video, surprise, surprise, isn't that how we learn? Uh, and, like, uh, someone said, like, a specific message that was helpful to me in this direction, and so I thought I'd share, right? So this person on YouTube was an agent of Jesus, uh, and that lady whether or not she knew about it was definitely an agent of Satan because by the time the conversation ended, she told me that, uh, well, yeah, so you believe in Jesus because you witnessed him, which is great. But she's like, I admire anyone who even believes in this pole that's inside of this train. I'm like, uh, okay, I thought I was crazy. Well, no one is crazy, but you get what I'm trying to say. To the math, to the math. This is really fun. Okay, so when can we uh, rearrange <laughs> rearrange an infinite sum is the question that we want to answer. And the short answer is, remember, an infinite sum is an infinite series. So the short answer is, if the infinite series is absolutely convergent. So, to begin our discussion, let's consider this infinite sum. Uh, it should reveal itself to you really quickly as soon as you see a number of terms. Uh, in the sum, right? So, 1 minus a half plus a third. Are you on to it? You better be. This is a famous infinite sum. Uh, well, in the math world, anyway. <laughs> and um, famous relative, right? Like, okay. Well, it's within context. Okay. Plus 1 seventh. And then plus dot, dot, dot. Right? Okay, cool. So, this is... First of all, we know what it is equal to. I have a video showing that this infinite sum is equal to the natural log of 2. And of course, this very famous infinite sum is what we uh, lovingly call the alternating harmonic. So alternating harmonic series. Right? Okay. We know these things about the alternating harmonic. We know that the harmonic diverges, but the alternating harmonic converges, specifically to the natural log of 2. We also know that the alternating harmonic does not absolutely converge. So first, let's write the alternating harmonic using sigma. So as like an infinite series you'd easily recognize because you, I guess, have come to associate infinite series with sigma. But anyway, uh, this here uh, written using sigma notation would read um, n equals 1 to infinity and then it'd be negative 1 to the power n plus 1 uh, and then times 1 over n. That's the um, alternating harmonic, and as I said, it converges, and it converges to uh, the natural log of 2, but it does not absolutely converge. Absolute convergence means that we take the absolute value of the inside of sigma, and then consider 
uh, the series that we'd get. And of course, if we do that, if we take the absolute value of the inside of sigma on the alternating harmonic, what we're going to get is just the harmonic. And so um, we just get this, and we know this diverges. In fact, I have a video proving why this diverges, but I also have a video, as I said, showing you how this converges to the natural log of 2. Okay, so when a series does not absolutely converge, but it converges without the absolute values, it's called conditionally convergent, and therefore the alternating harmonic is conditionally convergent. Meaning, if we want to add these guys up, add these infinitely many things up, and get the natural log of 2, we are not allowed to rearrange. Because the alternating harmonic is not absolutely convergent. Rearrangement is allowed only if you're absolutely convergent. So here's an example of an absolutely convergent series. I could very easily uh, create one. I could just throw a square on that end. And now if we take the absolute value of this, right? If we take the absolute value of the inside of sigma, what I'm gonna get is uh, this series, right? And I know this series converges by using the P series, right? Uh, I have many videos on uh, the P-series, so I'm not going to say too much here, but this is a P-series with P. Well, we require that P is greater than 1, but here P is equal to 2, so converges. And since this series converges when I throw on the absolute values, because it's going to turn into this and we know this converges, we say this series is absolutely convergent. So. In this series, you're allowed to rearrange the terms, and if you did that, you'd get the same sum. But in this series, if you rearrange the terms, you might not get the same sum. In fact, I'm going to show you how a rearrangement of this alternating harmonic series is going to have us claim that this series as a sum is equal to zero. Wait we know it's equal to the natural log of two. So how could we rearrange this and say it's equal to zero? Well. Let me show you. This is how. Okay. Now, I already wrote the alternating harmonic using sigma, so no need. You know, I erased that over here. But here's a rearrangement of the alternating harmonic. So we can rearrange it like this. So we could be like uh, 1 minus 1 half, and then minus a fourth, and then plus a third, and then minus a sixth, and then minus an eighth. So you'll understand why we're doing this in a second. And then what's going to be next? Plus a fifth, right? You should have guessed. Plus a fifth. And then it's going to be minus a tenth. And then minus a twelfth. Right? And then plus what? Plus a seventh. And then it's going to be what? Plus a seventh minus a fourteenth. And then minus a sixteenth. And then plus dot, dot, dot. I've showed more of the alternating harmonic here and their rearrangement than I did here just to, you know, convince you of what the rearrangement is going to have us write in the next step. But, you know, obviously this infinite sum and this infinite sum are the same. It's just that these are rearrangements of these guys, right? Okay, cool. Now, in this rearranged version of the alternating harmonic, do this. Group this and then group this. You should know these two are the next group. And these two are the next group. Now, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. I'll write these in blue. So I have 1 half. And then a third minus a sixth is a sixth. A fifth minus a tenth is a tenth. That's just common denominator, so I'm not telling you details of why this is true. You should know. A seventh minus a fourteenth is a fourteenth. And what I have in front of all of these guys is plus, right? In each case, okay, plus. And then plus here, and obviously this is positive to lead. Well, what are the emissions? Let's write down the emissions from the previous step. So I have a minus one fourth here, and then I have a minus one eighth here, and then I have a minus one twelfth here. But 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 wait, but wait. If we factor out a one half from this infinite sum, obviously it's an infinite sum. So next, I didn't write the minus. Uh, 1 16th and so we do a similar rearrangement in the rest of the terms But I'm just gonna write plus dot 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 because well, it's an infinite sum. I can never write all of them, right? Okay, so dot 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 got it, but wait, but, 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 but wait if you look at all of these guys If we factor out one half from them look at what we're gonna get if we factor out one half Then I guess I could factor out the one half in blue 
Now look at what I'm going to get. One half and then the one half will turn into a one. And then it's going to be minus the one fourth is now one half because I've factored out a one half. The one sixth is a third, right? And then minus a fourth plus a fifth, you get it. Minus a sixth, déjà vu, plus a seventh, and then minus an eighth, and then plus dot, dot, dot. After we factor out the one half, what we've got is one half of this. So the sum, this infinite sum, which is the famous alternating harmonic, we know is equal to the natural log of two. But if we call it s, what we've got is a rearrangement of s. This was still equal to s. A rearrangement of s would have us write that s is equal to one half. This is also s. So s is equal to one half s. Meaning, then that s, the sum, must be equal to zero, because zero satisfies this equation. But wait, we know it's equal to the natural log of two, so this must be a mistake, and it is, because rearrangements are not allowed unless your series is absolutely convergent. And I'm absolutely done.